Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper, and uh, this is AC Clean and Check Part 2. And before I get started, I just want to say that this video is for information purposes only, and uh, you should work at your own risk. And um, uh, there are things here very potentially dangerous that could uh, injure you, or blind you, or uh, kill you. So. Uh, I would only recommend uh, performing cleaning check on your air conditioner under the direct supervision of a licensed professional. Okay, well with that being said, um, let's get started here. The, uh, the first thing I look for on an air conditioner when I do a cleaning check is I look at the filter. Now uh, that is right underneath the air conditioner. That's my uh, return air. And uh, that's where we keep our filter. Now some of them will be in the ceiling or some of them you have one here and you'll have one up high. So let's just take a look in here. And by looking at this, let's just take that off. We can look and see that someone is using a good quality air filter. Now they don't need to cost twenty dollars. I think this costs three and a half dollars. Uh, I much prefer the pleated type like this and if you use this type more than likely the uh, evaporator core will be clean and will not uh, you won't have to fool with it uh, when you see those blue poly filters they let stuff get through there and uh, then you have to do more coil cleaning so this is uh, a good filter and let's uh, let's look at that evaporator coil and uh, this air conditioner was installed eight years ago and it never has been cleaned or I should say it never has needed to be cleaned so let's look up there okay all right there's your uh, coil and I don't see anything really dirty on it so it's gonna go another year no cleaning necessary Um, I want to tell you all a story. Uh, a few years ago, me and my dad, we put an air conditioner in for a young lady who lived over there in South Tampa. And uh, we, uh, you know, of course checked the cooling because it was during the middle of the summer. And uh, we always checked the heat too. Because uh, sure as shooting, if you don't check the heating function, you'll be getting a call that fall. Because it, you know, the first cool spell. So we checked that and uh, we told the lady that you need to have a clean and check done, you know, once a year. That's what we recommend. And, um, you know, give us a call in a year and we'll come out and we'll look at it. And um, about three and a half years go by and she calls me and uh, you can tell she's agitated. And uh, she says that. Uh, you know, we put in a crappy air conditioner, which, you know, it's the same one I have in my house right here, and uh, same brand, and uh, we did a poor installation, and uh, her air conditioner wasn't working, and she wasn't happy, and I said, well, ma'am, uh, you know, you opted just for the uh, one-year parts and labor warranty, uh, it's not covered, um, you know, she could have got the five or ten-year warranty, but um, I said, you opted for that, and uh but, you know, if you're really unhappy and we did a bad job, I'll come out there and I won't charge you anything and I'll take a look at it. So, uh, she said, yeah, come on out. So, we come out there and, you know, like I said, guys, the first thing I check out is the filter. And she had a nice, brand new, clean, pretty filter just like this one. And uh, I get up in there and I look at the coil and uh, what I pull out is this is a Walmart bag, McDonald's wrappers, and the evaporator coil was covered in dog hair. And uh, I brought her over, I got the flashlight out and showed her, and I said, ma'am, it's not a crappy install, and it's not a crappy air conditioner, it's a uh, lack of maintenance. And uh, she says, well, how much will it cost <clears throat> to have that cleaned? And I said, well, it's $99. Well, she told us that she would get her son to do it and that we could leave, and uh, we did. But, uh, you know, maintenance is uh, very important. 
the cleaner you keep your air conditioner, the better it's going to run, the longer it's going to last, the less the least the less electricity it will use. Okay, I just want to show y'all where it says model number RBHK-17. That 17 is the BTUs that this air conditioner will uh, do in heat absorption. So if you take 17 and you divide it by 12, that gives you roughly a ton and a half. Uh, you know, your air conditioner might say 24, it might say 30, 36. If you divide 36 by 12, that, that means you have a 3 ton system. Now sometimes you can have a 3 ton air handler and you could have a, you know, a three and a half ton air conditioner outside they do that for efficiency so uh, none of what I'm telling you is set in stone um, I want to tell you all another story I um, uh, used to work for a major company here in town and um, the, it was one of the best companies I ever worked for and the owner got up in age and he sold it to some guys who were a little more than used car salesmen and uh, that I got a call. My first ticket of the day was to go out to West Chase, and uh, there was an older couple out there. They had, you know, moved and retired to Florida, and they built their dream home. And uh, as soon as I knock on the door, they go, "Boy, oh, I'm glad you're here. You're the fourth technician to show up, and nobody can tell us what's wrong with our air conditioner." And I said, "Wow, nobody's uh, said anything in the shop about it." So. I, uh, you know, proceeded to, you know, check the filter, check the coil, check the pressures, check the, uh, the delta T, which the delta T is the temperature change, change in temperature. You know, if you have uh, 80 degree air going in and it's blowing out at uh, 60 degrees, that's a, a delta T, a change in temperature of 20 degrees. And that's excellent if your air conditioner will do that. Actually, if it runs anywhere between 15 and 20, that's, uh, that's, that's good. So I checked all that and I couldn't find anything wrong and I went up in the attic and you know looked to see if there was a duct broke off you know not connected and they were air conditioning your attic no it was all good and uh, finally it dawned on me to ask the people how uh, how big their house was the living area and they said it was 1500 and something square feet and uh, I looked at the air conditioner it was only a two ton air conditioner and uh, I said, well, for this type of construction, you know, the, the air conditioner should be larger. It should be like, you know, uh, two and a half or three ton. You know, it depends on the insulation values. And uh, really, if you're having a home constructed, they do a manual J, and that's an in-depth look at the insulation of the walls. You know, if you have a crawl space, uh, the R factor of your ceiling, um, you know, is your home made out of wood, masonry, foam. Uh, you know, you can... Uh, I've seen homes that were uh, made out of foam, like this one is, uh, you know, and you may only have a ton and a half air conditioner in the whole thing, you know, or you might have a two ton, it, it depends. But on this particular home, it was way undersized, and I told the people, and boy, they were just overjoyed, because uh, during the middle of the day, it gets up to about 85 in the home, and it never cools off until it gets in the evening, and then it'll finally cool down to 77 or 78. Um, so I did the rest of my calls and when I got back to the shop they were waiting for me and uh, they said what were you doing out there telling those people that the air conditioner was too small and I said well you know it's 85 in their house it's not cooling well you shouldn't have told them that and this and that and well they really laid into me and I ended up getting you know fired over that and um, I come to find out later from another guy that worked there he told me that they sent a fast talking salesman out there and told the people that it was all their fault uh, that uh, they needed to get the builder out there and they needed more insulation in the attic and they needed to buy tinted windows and and uh, you know I didn't know what I was doing and uh, and all that and uh, I, I don't know whatever became of those people or their home but uh, uh, it's very important to size an air conditioner properly. Nowadays, they undersize the air conditioner a little bit so they don't get any lawsuits for having mold in your house. So if it takes a little longer to cool your house off, um, that's the way it's done. It's for lawsuit purposes. Okay, I'm going to show you all how to clean uh, an evaporator coil.
in place. And uh, what I have here is my shop vac. This is my condensate drain and what I do is I put the shop vac over here and I'm just demonstrating this and I'll take some uh, duct tape and I'll wrap that around so it makes a nice good seal and I'll turn it on so we catch all the, um, the cleaner that comes out of the conden condensate drain. Okay, the uh, next thing you want to do if your air handler is like this is you want to put something in there to catch the uh, what I call the drippings because you don't want that to get all in that box and run all over the house. So just put, it doesn't matter what kind of pan it is, you can even use a lot of towels sometimes in a shop vac. Okay, um, I, I'm not going to be cleaning the coil uh, in my house because it's upright and it would be very difficult to try and uh, show you all how to clean it and it would make a big mess and get all over the camera. So I happen to have another uh, air handler that's uh, in pretty sad shape and um, this was originally mounted uh, vertically and I've got it uh, horizontal. The only difference is, is like this would be up in an attic or a crawl space or a closet and there would be a, a pan underneath here to catch the condensation and it would flow out this way. So, But for demonstration purposes it's going to be a lot easier to show you how to clean a coil and you can see uh, this one is pretty dirty here. Uh, so I want to show you how to do it. Anyway, I just have a cheapy garden sprayer. I think it costs about 10 bucks up at Home Depot. And uh, I've got some of this uh, coil cleaner. Now this is uh, the uh, no rinse. You don't have to rinse it off. Now I usually do. I get some clean water and I'll rinse the uh, stuff off of there. But uh, the directions say you need to mix it 50-50 with water. Uh, I'm going to put this on straight because it's so dirty. And uh, in my last video I talked about you never want to touch this stuff in here. You don't want to bend those coals over because it will, um, or fins, uh, you will restrict the airflow and you want as much air flowing through this thing as you can. Uh, and you uh, do not ever, ever want to use a pressure washer and I'm going to repeat that again. Do not use a pressure washer on this thing right here if you can get at one because it will bend the fins over and it will defeat the purpose. So let's, uh, let me show you and when you get a garden sprayer you want one that sprays a nice little beam like that. That's what you want. You want a little pressure and you of course uh, pump this up and I don't recommend that you use the one that you use for uh, poison uh, on your air conditioner or that you have one separately for AC and uh, all you want to do is you just want to you see that stuff on there and what I do is I just soak the coil like that just, just do a nice little soaking and let that stuff work itself in there and then you want to make sure you get the other side too you know and you get in there and you get that all nice and clean now some uh, some of these things are so filthy that you can't clean them in place with what I've got here what you have to do is you have to uh, evacuate the Freon and um, cut this manually cut this out and pull this coil out of the air handler, leave the air handler in place and take it outside and clean it with a uh, water hose. Don't use a pressure washer. And um, I never ever recommend using uh, a brush or touching any of that because you'll bend it over and it's a pain in the butt to straighten it out. But uh, this is basically, like I said, how you clean it. And the little heavy spots, like that right there, you just give that a little extra. I don't know if you can see how that's really cleaning that up. And then like that right there. But it'll be loaded with black mold legionella, funguses, all kinds of nasty diseases that your family is breathing. So uh, when they're like this I recommend you clean them really well. I'm going to clean that out right there. Okay well y'all got the idea. I'm going to dump this and go get some clean water and clean this off. Okay I uh, poured out the cleaner and I've got some uh, fresh water in here. I'm going to pump this up. And uh, that, that stuff's been soaking on there for a few minutes. And you'll see those little black specks up there. And you just hit those. And you try and get those out of there. And uh, this takes a little while. This is not like a, a three minute job. It takes a little while to clean one of these things properly. Um, the going rate for one of these things is somewhere between... 99 and uh, $200 is what somebody will charge to come out here and 
clean the coal that's dirty. And uh, I think it takes a little bit of time to do it. And uh, this stuff right here, you, you may not be able to get it off perfectly. And what you do is you come back and you put some more of that on there. And if it still doesn't come off, then you put some uh, stronger cleaner on there. And you want to make darn sure you rinse it off. I've been over to homes where they use too strong of a cleaner over the years. And these fins are gone and you'll just see pipes in there. And uh, you'll have to replace this or replace the whole thing. So just take your time and you just work it back and forth. See, I'm going to have to put some more of that. I'm going to have to get a harsher cleaner on this. But th this gives you all the general idea of how it's done. And make sure you get both sides. And when you're underneath one of these, this uh, stuff gets all on your face. It's a real nasty job. But anyway, that's the dirty little secret of cleaning evaporator coils. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about delta T, and that's our change in temperature. And um, the thermostat says it's about 75 degrees in here, and it's set for cool at 72. This is a Harbor Freight uh, non-contact thermometer, not the best thing in the world. Let's see what we got. And it says it's about 75 degrees. So. It's close to what the thermometer says, I mean the uh, thermostat says, so it's probably pretty accurate. Um, this would be like the closest vent right here. Let's see if we can get a temperature reading off of that. 55. Okay, so that's the thermostat. That's the supply temperature. And uh, what you really want to measure here is the... Uh, the return air. But this thing will shut off. So you go right here and take this temperature and it says it's 70.9. So the other reading was 55 so we got you know a 15 or a 16 degree uh, temperature drop. So that says the air conditioner is working good. Okay I've removed the cover of the air conditioner and I have the uh, blower fan motor running and if you can see that that is a variable speed motor and if you've ever had to have any replaced they're very expensive but uh, they give you the highest efficiency and like I said before this is a uh, this is a 14 sear air conditioner and uh, I've got my amp probe on that variable speed motor and it's showing it's drawing about half an amp or 0.6 uh, amps and uh, if this motor were drawing like six or seven amps, then we know it's starting to go bad. There's something wrong with it. Um, you know, usually a blower fan motor is going to draw anywhere from half an amp to you know maybe three or four. But you know, if if this thing starts really drawing a lot, I would recommend that you uh, change out the motor. But this one seems to be working pretty good. And what we do on a clean to check is we look at all these connections here and we look for burn terminals, corrosion. We try and tighten them up. And uh, you never ever want to work on this thing live. Now this is the disconnect. I recommend you pull that. I recommend you throw the breaker and you get a certified electrician to make sure there's no juice in there because uh, 240 will kill. Um, anyway, so uh, the some of the older motors, those blower fan motors, they have a little port in there you can put oil in there. This one doesn't have that. But uh, if it did, we would oil it up. And uh, that's basically all there is to a clean and check for a uh, split air conditioning system. Well, this is the Homestead Prepper. Uh, I hope that uh, this was helpful.